everyone. I'm going to do another picture from this um, snail page. From um, this is from the um, Imagine Morphia book. I can't get under the camera by uh, Kirby Razan. And uh, I'm going to do this um, snail here. I had such fun with the other one that I did that I thought I'd have another go. I'm going to use the Black Widow pencils again, which I used last time. Um, they seem to work really well on the paper. Sometimes I do like to experiment with different types, but I just thought I'd have another go with the Black Widows. And this one I'm going to do differently. This snail here I coloured in grey and made sort of red and gold building. So I thought I'd do this one different. I, my idea is maybe to do them all looking a little bit different. So this snail we're going to do in brown. Now I have quite a few browns in this Black Widow set. I'm going to start with my darkest, which is my Huntsman Brown. I'm just going to see if I can zoom in just a tad for you. I might, I can't move my book very well. Oh, she says lying. I can't move it down um, towards me at all. In fact, I don't know if that's any better actually. Anyways, we're going to go in with the darkest colour under the building here where there's this, this is going to be shadow. And we've got these shadow lines drawn in for us as well, which is really helpful. So we know exactly where to put the shadow. And it isn't exactly completely grayscale, but it really does help. And I'm thinking that bit's a little bit higher. So under here, I'm going to put a few more layers going to go back over what we've done already to really emphasize that shadow and then I'm going to just gently reduce my pressure on the pencil and fade it out a little bit towards the body of the snail because the rest might be lighter I'll probably add some more of this dark pencil in a minute I'm going to do the rest of the body in a lighter shade I think I'm going to go right down there's a couple of shades in this set I'm going to use the um, a foxy brown and I'm actually going to just color the whole of the snail in this and then in a light layer, lightish, I'm not going to, I'm pushing hard enough so if I don't do another layer of colour, this will be enough, but I don't want to burnish it right down into the paper. So I'm going to do all of him, and I'm just trying to keep it fairly even at the moment, and then I will go back in with that darker shade. And I'm going to overlap this darker colour as well to try and bring it all together. We don't want a sort of dark to light with no um, sort of mix and blend. There, you know, with shadow, you don't have to blend it in quite so well because it can sometimes be more of a definite line. But I still think it looks nicer if we have some overlap. So it looks a little neater somehow. Now this paper is quite interesting, it feels a little bit more toothy, i.e. slightly more rough than some of the papers that I've used. Um, the colours don't seem quite as vibrant somehow, I think need to layer them up a little bit more, but I think that's okay because it means that you have got the scope to do that and with so much colour, well not colour, shading already on the drawings, maybe you don't need such a big hard um color i don't know what I, i'm not using the right words maybe you don't need such a definite color so there's our base layer of the brown Ooh, sorry i hit the tripod then i'm going to go back in with my huntsman now and think about other areas that might need some shadow i'm going to go back in here darken that up a little bit more now we've been over it with that lighter brown I really want that to look like the building has got a little bit of a gap under it, really casting a shadow over the snail. Now under the head here, look, there's going to be some shadow here. And then maybe just in this bit, because this bit looks like it's dented in a little bit. And here, look, along there. What I like is we've got so much guidance with regards to where to colour. Um, where to put our shades in a little bit of shadow in there and then under here I reckon now down here I think this underside here a little bit here I think we can see just checking you can see I can't I can't zoom it in too much and keep the whole thing in shot it's just due to the where my tripod is taking up so much space on my desk. I need a hook from the ceiling to hang my camera from and then I'll be okay. 
be an interesting invention for someone. I'm sure they've been invented. I have seen, I'm sure I've seen someone, it wasn't a camera, it was a light hanging from the ceiling. Now along here, there's a few little dips, which I'm just going to emphasise with this colour, just to give a little bit more of a sort of bumpy look to the snail. All the way along here, these lines aren't just for show, they're actually to give him a little bit of shape. Okay, I think we need to do a little bit more with the head, it's a little bit plain. See, under this, hmm, what is this? Tentacles? Antennae? Here, put a little bit of shadow under those, and a little bit around these dots that have been drawn on. I'm just roughly putting a few lines. Now these are the eyes. Um, I'm thinking it might be a little darker here maybe. Maybe there might be shadow underneath. Not sure. Maybe a little bit towards the bottom of there and there. Okay. I think I'm happy with him. I'm going to leave him. And now I'm going to move on to the building. And as I said, our last building was red and gold. Let's put him in the middle for you. There we go. Um, so you can see a bit of the building there. Um, this one though, I'm going to do differently. Um, I am thinking, let's see what I've got. Um, hmm. Could do greens, blues, pinks and purples. <laughs> I'm going to go with greens, I think. Yes. Right, I've got four greens in this set of Black Widow. So it gives us quite a nice choice. I'm just getting them out to show you, show you the nibs so you can see them. So two, you can see these two are really quite dark. And we've got this one, which is very bright and fluorescent. And this one is also very bright and it's more of a bluey green. So I'm going to start with my darkest green, I think. And this is the Fang green. And I'm going to have a look on this building and mark out the darker area. So this here, you see where it's already shaded in a dark stripe because this is in the back this is inside the building I reckon I think this building is see-through so I'm not going to do anything in here I'm going to leave that empty so if I do do a background which I very I don't think I will to be honest um, I could have um, um, shown it through there but uh, as I say I don't think I'm going to so that's another back bit and here not sure if I should have coloured all of that. I do a little bit there. And now, let's see. I'm just going to sharpen this a little bit blunt for my liking. And I'm going to think about the top. Um, so up here, we've obviously got quite a dark bit. We'll colour that in. So it looks like we're looking through to a dark area in the back. And we'll do a little bit of down here where this bit where these lines are because this bit is in front is casting a shadow on our um, roof go now obviously you don't have to use green for this you can use any color you wish i'm just showing you with green there's no convention people might like to just do grayscale gray snails and brown buildings which was my initial thought and then i decided no let's make it more interesting so I'm going to move on to the toxic green and I'm going to move up. I'm going to do the roof first. Now with this, it's a very bright, although it looks dark, it's very um, vibrant. I'm going to, I want to make it darker on the edges. So see, I'm fading it towards the middle and making sure it's quite dark here. I mean, <sighs> Add some fan green as well to that edge. We'll see how well this works. The idea is that if it's darker on the edges and lighter in the middle, it looks more rounded. Because obviously this is a dome. So we'll see how that looks. This isn't going to be my final colour. So it's not quite going to look right at the minute. And we're going to do the same thing on this mini dome up here as well so darker and then lighter towards the middle like that um i don't think i'm going to use this color anywhere else hmm. at the moment 
Now these two are quite vibrant. I'm going to go for the Everglade next. If it doesn't work, I can go over it with some other colours anyway. I can do the foreground in this Everglade. You can see it's quite a bluey green again. Now I probably want to put some definition in this after. What I thought I would do was do a layer and then it will help me to think about where I'm going with this. So I'm going to do the bits that seem to be most forward. So that is underneath. So it's a little bit not quite so forward. Um, I think this, um, I'm not sure. Yep, I'm probably a bit there. This bit here. This bit here. Um, this bit all around here. It's got these little circles on as if it's jeweled, but um, we'll see. We're not going, I think they're a little small for detailing. And I'm going to add a layer of this on top of the roof as well. I'm pressing quite hard until I get to the middle. So I want to mix it all up. I want to leave it lighter in that middle area. But I do want some green on there. Then here I'm going to make it darker on the edge and lighter towards the middle because that is a rounded piece, as is this bit. So I'm trying to get a bigger layer of colour on those edges. Now we've got, I'm going to do this bit, but leave those two bits. Um, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to leave this colour for now. I missed that bit. I'm going to the cicada, Oops, which I'm just going to throw on the book and do the other bits. And basically it keeps it interesting with all the different green tones and uh, we can bring it all together in a minute by adding some depth with our dark green again. But we want to get a fair layer down that we've got something to work with. There we go. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go back to my darkest green now, which was the fang green. And I'm going to think about uh, under here, I think there'll be a bit of shadow. So it's like a little sill. And we've also got lines drawn here indicating to us that there is shadow. So I'm going to use those to help me. I've got a little bit there as well. Now with this bit, I think there will be some shadow under here. I think this would be like an overhang. But also here, I am going to make it darker on the ends to help with that spherical look. Remember, this whole building is spherical. It's not just the roof. So I'm going to add some darker tone to the edges just to try and pull that together and we'll do the same here so a little bit darker here and here than perhaps we have in the middle and this bit too so I'm going to just go in with this darker pencil here and just reduce the pressure as I go towards the middle so that we get slightly darker edge and lighter center. I realize I haven't done that bit. I'll get there in a minute. So I'm just fiddling really with that. Um, I think that one is going to be cicada again or else it's going to look a little odd because we haven't got loads of that color. It's like a little balcony isn't it? And it's got these little squares and I'm thinking I think those squares might be darker and might be little set in areas so I'm going to use the toxic green for those so just move along with these just fill them in Dots along there. 
now I'm just having a little look see how it's all working out I'm going to go back in with my fan green and just emphasize this to me it's not quite dark enough under there I need that really looking like it's set back and it's and it's the very back part of the building um, and the same with this one amazing what difference just a little bit makes and here just a little bit more a little bit more of the dark colour especially here this point doesn't seem to want to stand out very well let's make sure we've got some dark colour behind it so it helps to bring it forward um, yeah, I also think under here again isn't enough to give that such a three dimensional look as I want. I'm going to go along the edge of this line and this line just to give it more interest to make these little bits and pieces stand out. go I'm gonna leave it there I'm happy with that now so I finished fiddling around so there's our second snail from this page I'm really enjoying doing this I think it's great fun it's really nice doing something completely different and uh, and having some clues as to where to do the shading is actually um, good too so uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the video thank you for watching and happy coloring <laughs>